Hey, everybody. Welcome to the core group trends in 21, 2021 webinar. Uh, I'm Bob Sutton, and right next to me is Matt Furman. Hello. We're going to be uh, walking you guys through the staffing trends that we see this year. Um, very excited to get started. Um, Matt, this is our first ever webinar together. It is it's an inaugural webinar, and we're pretty excited about it. So um, we're excited to get the news out. We have a unique uh, view in the marketplace. And so this is a great opportunity to share what we're seeing and gleaning from the marketplace to um, our, our network. Yeah, absolutely. Um, a lot of stuff to cover. Um, we're going to do a bit of a question and answer session at the end. So if you have questions, I believe you should be able to write them in. If I'm wrong about that, let me know. But uh, there's also a chat section. So if you have comments, you want to leave comments as we go, um, yeah, we'll, we'll allow that and try to address anything that comes up uh, live because we're live. We did not pre-record this. Um, we like things to be raw and we're ready to go. So, um, so yeah, so I'm going to, I'm already sharing our screen, so I'm going to click over here and we'll get going. So, uh, by way of quick introductions, there we go. So Matt, go ahead, just kind of give a quick update on who you are. I'm a, the CEO of Core Group Resources, graduate from the United States Merchant Marine Academy and started Core Group back in 2012 um, with the idea of connecting people to their destiny as, as a mission. Very cool. Um, I'm And I'm Bob Sutton. I've been a part of Core Group since uh, the beginning of last year. Um, and I, I have a lot of recruitment experience in the values-based world as well as a lot of uh, leadership in, in operational leadership for different organizations um, and uh, was crazy enough to say yes to Matt uh, joining his team uh, in the midst of uh, COVID-19. It was uh, a wild year. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but it's been awesome and so here we are in 2021 looking forward excited for you know what's next so um, so yeah. Glad to have you on board. Thanks. All right, let's, uh, okay. So kind of, uh, you know, the way I wanted to frame this up, Matt, is, um, you know, as we're looking looking to 2021, um, it's always important to be retrospective first and kind of address um, the areas that we've come from over the last year so we can look forward and know what might be coming. So kind of talk us through what you saw in the market over the course of last year as it pertains to, you know, these these kind of main issues that we saw. Mm -hmm. Obviously, COVID-19 uh, was a um, wild event for all of us, Earth. Um, and so there's not one person on the planet that wasn't affected by this downturn. Um, they did call it a double black swan event, which is you know, usually you have like an oil downturn or you'll, you'll have an economic downturn, but to have both at the same time is, is, is a rare occurrence. And so um, when the downturn occurred uh, and it, we're still coming out of in 2020, March, um, we really saw a lot of job contraction and, um, and, and primarily the customer service or business to customer space. So restaurants, things like that. Um, industries that seem to really thrive or survive through it, I always say, God bless transportation, getting things from point A to point B. So trucking, shipping, um, things still had to be delivered, but the supply chain changed. So instead of delivering um, particular goods, it suddenly it became an issue of getting equipment and PPE and masks and all kinds of different things. And so the supply chain pivoted overnight. And so the downturn did create a lot of hardship, but it also created a lot of opportunity. Um, and that opportunity came with being able to pivot into those streams that that, that expanded rapidly. Yeah, no, that's great. Uh, being a part of what what I saw here at Core Group, I mean, that that's absolutely what, um, what you were able to lead us through, uh, you know, 
identifying certain markets that have popped up and and how to move into those quickly um so yeah so that's where we were um where are we now what do we have oh i went too far uh let's go back there where are we now what uh what yeah kind of talk so us you, through the present yeah so obviously with three trillion dollars in cash you know pushed through the system in in the u.s uh that created a an artificial reef or trough you know or bridge to to carry the trough which i think really did help i mean i think without the the economic aid you would have seen hardship that probably this country's never seen even in the great depression and so um by pushing that cash out it really helped bridge a lot of people across and and allowed the market trough and job market to recover so people could get back to work um the obviously it being an election year was very bizarre as well so there's a lot of decision uncertainty that happened throughout the end of the year but there was still recovery as well and then the vaccine did show up which i think the vaccine removed about 50 percent of the fear from the market um which is that there's a light at the end of the tunnel this isn't a hopeless nebulous we're gonna live in forever and so the vaccine really i believe removed you know 50 percent of the apprehension um and so that's there it's still a little bit of a slow rollout right now but it's just the hope of the vaccine has helped quite a bit mm -hmm. market uncertainty um a lot of companies were supported by what i call false ppp cash so their p l's and cash injection were elevated not because they were doing well in business but because they got a forgivable government loan through yeah. the process and so that kind of that ease the burden moving into 2021 um surprisingly the market in the us is is really rebounding in a strong way i yeah. i'm i really do think and i think you know in light of events that occurred last week in the capital transition i think i believe we're heading into a period of 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 calmness and growth uh moving forward we're, there's still a little bit of disruption with the administration handover, but that's that's it's like any thunderstorm. It rolls in an afternoon and it'll be out. Yeah. And then we're going to head to kind of smooth waters ahead. So. Yeah, we've got, what, uh, nine days to that official yeah. transition. So, um, so yeah, might be a little bit of, of turmoil from now till then. But, yeah, hopefully that. Yeah, it's, a, it's, a, it's an afternoon thunderstorm. So, yeah, um, we're really excited what's coming ahead. So um, this is the meat of what we want to talk about. So, um, you know, uh, kind of there's so many questions around where are we going? Um, how can companies, uh, how can industries prepare for the release for, you know, as, as we approach, you know, the vaccine is, is yeah, I think that I've seen a lot more steps recently in the news about, at least especially here in Houston, where, uh, I believe it's the Astros um, basically made their facility available for vaccine uh, distribution um, and, and other like that. So, um, you know, what, what do you see as far as how companies can plan for a recovery? Um, maybe this is broad because it's not mm -hmm. industry specific, but um, and then how companies can staff up or what yeah as we look to recover and grow into 2021 like what what are some kind of high level thoughts you have on that so the good news is there's seven billion people on earth and there's still seven billion people on earth that have wants needs desires for goods transportation services things like that so the world population is the same um, as it was last year and so in the year before that and so the, it's continuing to grow so the demand will be there it's always going to be there it's just a matter of when is the excess if it's in the oil industry so from the oil market perspective the excess is um, going to be cooked through in q4 of 2020 or 2021 so q4 at the end of this year 2021 we're going to cook through all of our reserves 
and travel and everything's going to catch back up and there's going to be a, a oil price increase. Um, the digital world, the cloud-based infrastructure, which is Amazon's, all your cloud, what we call cloud czars, uh, they're continuing to grow and creating opportunities for companies, uh, startup companies, um, smaller companies able to do more with less. And so you're seeing a, you're seeing those services grow. Um, cruise lines, um, I still think have a ways to go. I think you're going to have to have an entire vaccine immersion, which I think is not going to come online until the end of probably 20. 21, you'll really see kind of a, an appetite to get on a cruise ship. Um, the financial sector is, is booming. I mean, the stock market's going berserk. Um, and the good news is a lot of these cloud-based companies that control most of the cloud infrastructure are U.S.-based companies. And mm -hmm. so we're seeing market recapitalization. We're seeing um, those, uh, those companies really grow right now. And so I think with um, the U.S., uh, I think restaurants and, and general services like that, again, people want to go out and eat. They don't want to eat ramen noodles every night. At the, it just, they just don't. And people finally tap out and say, let's get out of here. Let's go to, let's go to a restaurant and see other people. We're going to um, get calls from the ramen lobby after you just said that. Yeah. <laughs> I apologize to ramen noodles because I, I, <laughs> you supported me for years. So. Yeah. Um, you got us through college. Mm -hmm, yeah. Exactly. So staffing and recovery for growth, I think, you know, you, you need to, when you're planning, plan, you know, the trough, there'll, there'll be portions of disruption throughout the year, but we're, all, we're off the bottom now. So we're off the bottom and we're in a retrenched phase for growth. And so really when you're planning, don't get caught up in fear. Don't be petrified to move forward. Mm -hmm. I mean, lean into the storm lean into the storm and press through because it will end and there's there's a lot of growth on the other side worst thing you can do is is just be still and, and do nothing yeah always plan and strain forward so that's great uh that's great vision for uh this coming year um you know if if you know matt well you know he's a vision caster uh by nature and so um so yeah uh what I'd like to do at this point is kind of drill down as, you know, core group, we have our specific industry niches that we that we really spend uh, an incredible amount of time and focus in our recruitment efforts um, as we partner with companies, you know, helping them look to that future uh, you just talked about. And so let's do that. Let's, um, these are the industries that core group serves. Um, there are a few more that that we've had a few, um, at least in my understanding, uh, we've had a few other industries that we have served, um, including healthcare. It's not even on that list, but we we have, um, and we are. Um, but I'd love to kind of these are the these are the high level ones that we work with on a very consistent basis. And so, what um, what I like to do is kind of go through these individually um, and just hear. You know, clearly you've been at Core Group, you've been in the recruiting industry for what, 15, 16 yeah. years? Yeah. Um, and so, and you've had exposure into all these different areas for a very long time. So let's kind of dive in individually um, and uh, and kind of talk through what you, let's just start right here. Mm -hmm. So talk us through the maritime space. What do you see for 2021? Uh, you already mentioned cruise lines. Um, yeah. But, yeah, but the maritime, so maritime we look at, it's it's getting goods from point A to point B when you drill it down inside the hull of a ship. And so it's either ports terminals, it's shipping companies, it's service companies around those, it's class societies, it's engineering companies or naval architecture, it's service companies of all types, consultancies, just making sure goods get from point A to point B. We're involved in all of that. And so when you look at maritime, if it's crewing of ships, if it's onshore staffing of exec or, or recruitment of executives, um, we cover the, the, the full gambit, both on a executive search level, direct hire or contract basis. What we designate as offshore is offshore energy, which is offshore drilling, offshore construction for subsea in, installation projects, 
offshore wind, which kind of falls into renewables, but it's still offshore activity. Um, anything offshore related and then subsea, which is ROV, ROV pilots, remote operated vehicles, it's diving, it's anything to do with offshore work. I mean, luckily earth is covered by 70% water. So these two little market sectors cover quite a bit. Mm -hmm. um, and they are overlooked in America, unfortunately. 95% um, of gross domestic product GDP passes through maritime. Um, to give you an idea, half a billion dollars a day in the Port of Houston is exchanged every single day. Yeah. Which is like, people like overlook it and like, well, why, aren't, why are we not looking at this a little bit closer? I think you talk about opportunity, mm -hmm. it's phenomenal. Um, renewables, again, wind, solar, uh, battery storage, um, and other types of fuel development, hydrogen power, those are all emerging markets because everyone wants to save earth right now. Um, you know, carbon emissions, the heating of the earth, the finality of humankind on one planet, everyone's, you know, I guess everyone's reading all the same articles through their iPhones and so everyone's rushing towards it right now. Uh, problem with the renewables market is it's still developing. So as a lot of people rush into it from a job market perspective, sometimes it's harder to find jobs there because it's considered um, attractive. Mm -hmm. um, he heavy civil construction, um, construction projects, large office buildings. I mean, there's not going to be another large office building built in the next five years in Houston. Yeah. There's 25, I, I think, I want to say, I don't even want to say, it's like 25 million square feet of unused office space in Houston right now. So I think the civil construction market is going to more focus towards residential and kind of more tactical units, not the large towers that we're accustomed to seeing in Houston. Um, financial services, you can speak into that, Bob. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that's a, a market that we really dove into pretty significantly last year. Um, and the coming year, uh, I do think because um, there's going to be a lot more movement this year than there was last year. Um, financial, the uh, Financial services industry at large, um, you know, is is heavily dependent on the market. And because the market had an incredible rally towards the end of last year, most in the financial services space uh, did quite well. Um, if you were, you know, if, if you had built a book of business and were with a reputable company, you probably did okay. Um, in in 2020 um this year we're going to see it, it'll be interesting to see how the markets play through the course of the year um after in the new administration and and whatever the new administration's uh kind of budgetary priorities are um but i do see because of the less fear more optimism around the vaccine and kind of the opening back up of the country um, the market will respond to that. Um, and I think more financial services firms will be moving to make bigger hiring decisions as well. So, um, whether that's acquisitions and mergers or, um, continuing the long-term pattern of people moving out of, uh, wirehouse firms into independence, um, independent RIAs and, and broker dealers that, uh, you know, can usually offer better payouts than, you know, than their counterparts. So, Great. Um, what are you seeing as far as IT? Information technology is, there's a huge land race going on right now between Amazon Web Services and Microsoft Azure. And what I mean by that is um, these companies are both selling what, what they call instances on servers. So, they have these massive server facilities and they're building out automated business processes to make our jobs a little bit easier, but then they charge us for those instances. And so to give you an idea, Amazon's web services made last year about $8 billion in cash. Well, all of Amazon warehousing made $8 billion. 
which means there's a huge land rush going on. Amazon controls about 80% of that market. Uh, and Azure only controls about 20%. And so information technology is changing very quickly. Um, if you're looking for a career pivot, I mean, take a look at a a Amazon Web Services suite. I mean, they've pretty much offered all of their services there. Um, cyber, access identity, cyber threats and access identity. I mean, it's it's huge market right now. There's a lot of cyber attacks going on. We, you know, we get fished and attacked almost four or five times a week here at Core Group. I mean, there's so there's a lot of need there for programming and, and protection of, of personal information. So IT is gonna continue to grow, but it's also gonna transform at the same time as these uh, land races occur between AWS and Azure. Interesting, interesting. Um, so I'll, I'll address values-based businesses a little bit um, since that's an area I spend most of my time in. Um, with the start of, uh, COVID-19 affecting America last year, um, there was a major contraction based on fear, based on just the market itself as people were not able to uh, shop in person and kind of the, uh, obviously the economy shrunk a little bit. Um, you know, my, uh, my hope is that this coming year we will see nonprofits resuming normal business activities, um, values-based businesses, a lot of which thrived through COVID-19, uh, will have an even better year this year. That's my hope. Um, and then also places of worship. Uh, we've seen, uh, I have a lot of experience in the church uh, recruiting industry, and we know that a lot of churches, churches had to make major pivots from uh, obviously in-person worship venue to online. Um, many were prepared for it. Um, most of smaller churches and congregations were not. Um, and that's simply because uh, they didn't have the resources to produce uh, online content that larger churches typically do. And so um, hopefully that is an area that that we as core group can start to serve well, um, finding areas where we can actually be a great benefit to churches who are looking to expand their either the pastoral staff or even their technical staff, um, because clearly we have that skill set as well. Um, but uh, but not just with churches, also with um, you know the many nonprofits, values based, faith based nonprofits um, that uh, had to pull back. For fear of loss of loss of donated dollars uh, last year, we we really uh, my hope is that they are able to fully recover this year and get back into all the great service that nonprofits are able to provide, um, both here locally, nationally, and globally. So um, yeah. I do think there'll be a big recovery there. Great, yeah. And then, yeah, and then talk about finance and finance, finance and accounting. Yeah, finance and accounting is, um, it's always a need. You okay. have tax season, there's always a need. Um, the financial markets um, obviously contract like everything else, you know, with with business. If business does contract, they're shrinking invoice needs. And, and so the ability or volume of numbers counting goes down. And so that does affect the jobs. But um, what we're seeing, though, is a fractionalization in that space. For instance, CFOs, maybe can't, they can't find a full-time job. They can fractionalize their services out on contract and and contract maybe with five or six different companies mm -hmm. um, on an hourly basis. And so we are seeing some fractionalization in that space as well. But um, um, it's being a uh, – it, it's, it's finance and accounting is always a constant. Yeah. So, so it sounds like – uh, particularly maritime, um, maritime being a constant, uh, finance and accounting being a constant, um, offshore kind of took a hit last year, but, uh, but not necessarily, I mean, but we didn't see a whole lot of that. I mean, we did see, um, you just see project vacuums and everything yeah. being what they call pushed, um, to the right on the calendar so renewables that's a definitely a growth area i read something this morning that said that texas was going to be the largest solar provider by the end of 2021 um, uh, that's projection that's projection guess did you know 95 percent of all power in houston is solar 
Is that no, news I did to you? Not. That is news to me. Yeah. Did you know all of Disney World is powered by solar? No, I did not know that. So solar has quietly overtaken um, a lot of the traditional power sources. And the reason is, is the solar cells in the manufacturing of solar cells, they got very efficient with it. Hmm. And so it actually brought the cost down to build solar fields. Hmm. And so you've seen a kind of a solar revolution just suddenly happen. And we, you know, kind of happened without, anybody, happened paying without anyone paying attention. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then, as I mentioned, financial services, uh, actually, you know, last year was kind of a banner year because the market, you know, is of, above uh, 30,000. Um, and uh, I, yeah, that will continue values-based businesses, hopefully in recovery mode, offshore in recovery mode, but in growth recovery mode, um, heavy civil construction, clearly you mentioned the um, commercial space has, is gonna hit a long slowdown. Um, yeah. uh, heavy, you know, civil like road projects, those will continue. Uh, those did continue through the pandemic. And then IT is definitely a growth area um, that we'll see continue. Yeah. Um, so what, uh, what can people expect? What can our clients and those who are interested in working alongside us in 2021, what can they expect from us, not only as a company, but what we're able to provide? What will change? What will stay the same? What will get better? What do you, what do you see? So we've um, are in the process of going through our own uh, digital transformation here at Core Group. Um, we're rolling out the Core Group app, which will basically be an opportunity for our uh, job seeker base um, to log in uh, to our opportunities network and look and apply for jobs there, both real time and they can also contract through it as well. So we're pretty excited about that. Um, we've also just increased our back office business processes uh, to ser serve our clients as well as um, we've toyed, we went through our first AWS sprint with Amazon to do AI integration. Um, which is very interesting and kind of revealing. Um, the good news is for mankind is that some of the business processes that we wanted to automate, um, these servers can't do what people do. And that's mm -hmm. actually really good news because um, there's a lot, sometimes when you mention this stuff, some fear can be created and, and nervousness, but um, the good news is the technology is going to take hundreds, if not ever, to catch up to what people can do. Mm -hmm. And so that was good news. And our service, um, you know, we were an established company uh, that, that had, was able to grow through 2020. And so you're going to see us continue to grow this year. Um, our executive search services are going to continue. We picked up quite a few confidential and executive searches even this week. Companies looking to retrench themselves. And so you'll see um, continued growth out of us, but you'll also see um, more opportunities to engage with us like this, this webinar. And we're really doing our, our best to serve our client base, you know, by just helping people in the masses. You know, it's all about... You know, I, I truly believe if, if you are in a job that you love, there's no beginning and end of your day. You love what you do every mm -hmm. day. And uh, so we're working on automating our system to help accelerate that for others, you know, and that's what I'm most excited about that's over the great. coming years. Yeah. No, I know. Being in the in the recruitment industry or business is uh, amazing how many lives you're able to impact. Um, yeah. That, yeah. It's pretty incredible. Um Okay, so we've come to the fun part uh, here. Uh, we're gonna do a little Q and A. Uh, we had a few questions come in uh, via private questions here. So I'm gonna go ahead and ask ask away. If, if, if anyone else wants to uh, write in, uh, feel free to write. You can send it privately or send it to everyone, or uh, I think there's a chat functionality. Hopefully you can you can make that work. Uh, but here we go. The first question that got written in here, uh, Matt, what do you see, what industry uh, will likely grow the most in 2021? And, you know, what would be the cause of that? 
I paraphrase that question. Um, most likely to grow, it's renewables, hands down. Mm -hmm. I mean, right now, a Biden administration, everyone, everyone wanting to save Earth, um, like there's going to be hundreds of billions of dollars hmm. spent in that space in the next 10 years. So that, that, that the renewable side is going to be kind of the next frontier, I would think for, for opportunity. Cool. Um, what, uh, I was going to ask a follow-up question to that, but I think, yeah, I think that you covered it. it. Yeah. Okay. You, you nailed it. So good job there. Uh, another question that just, just trickled in, uh, what are the talent leaders' highest priority initiatives in 2021? Talent leaders' highest priority initiatives. Um, it's making sure you get the right people on board. Anytime there's a retrenching effect that occurs, um, especially on a team that's been suppressed through a downturn, your first few hires on retrenching and regrowth have to, are very important or they can really disrupt kind of a, a galvanized team mm -hmm. that was sent through the crucible of 2020. So I think the talent leaders are going to really focus on core values and culture uh, as they're trying to match people to their team. Okay, that's great. Good answer. Good answer. Uh, 10 points for Matt. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I wish I had a little scoreboard. Up there. <laughs> um, okay, uh, a couple more here. Um, what What do you think recruiting will look like in 2021? Relative, like what changes, I guess, that you've seen um, coming from where we were going forward? I believe you're going to see a lot more fractionalized work, which is part-time or freelance or independent work. Okay. So a lot of smaller, you know, if you're an individual that's good at a specific skill or task for a company, um, that'll, that'll be employed on an hourly basis. So I do think fractionalization is coming through the recovery. Um, I do think sales is going to be big. Um, reason is, is there's not a lot of conferences that go on right now. So you can't accidentally bump into people and business just happen. You actually have to have true hunters that go out and carve their way through the nebulous of the internet and personal relationships, things like that. Yeah, that's something that I've I've actually wondered about too. Before we jump off this question, is how from I mean any industry, how how are I mean do salespeople just need to know how to work the phone like never before? Social engineering is an art that no school teaches, so. And what I mean by that is just getting through the door and getting in front of, or getting through to someone on a Zoom call, whatever it is, there's an art to that. And so um, in the maritime space, we've done a terrible job of grooming and growing that over the last 50 years. It's a very relational business, but, um, you know, the, the, you really need, there's no real book on it. It's something, I mean, you can get training on it, um, so, but some people do have a knack for it. Yeah. Right. So, yeah, for sure. Um, and then, OK, here's our last question that just just popped up here. Um, what What are your thoughts on virtual recruiting? Um, how does that work? Does it work? That's a, maybe that's an even better question. Virtual. So you're talking about like someone doing the job out of their house somewhere. Um, yes. And or uh, I guess the process of bringing, I mean, the question is, you know, kind of explain how virtual recruiting works. So I, to, if I can expand on that, I, it's probably this questioner, if you want to comment on what you mean by this question, you can, but like what, uh, yeah, what are, what are some tools that people can use to find work in a virtual environment? Maybe. Okay. Maybe. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I just, I think, um, the problem with a lot of these job boards is they, um, have automated systems to a point where there's no people involved and then no one gets any feedback and everything goes to die. So I do think there's a virtual recruiting is a double-edged sword. It can be great if you have the right people behind 
looking, but mm -hmm. a lot of these companies will throw um, some someone with no experience to review all of these people coming through the door. And so sometimes that you can get lost in, 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 in the shuffle that way. Um, so when I tell people there's no real like silver bullet to this, it's, it's your organic network, who, you know, it's picking up the phone, calling people for help. And it's, and then it's, you know, looking for jobs online. Um, and, but not just sending a resume in to, um, and just hope and pray. Right. It's like you have to work your way into these companies or find a common link for a referral through the door. You really do. Um, so virtual recruiting is I think it's you have to elevate yourself above the digital masses through organic relationship. Hmm. That's what I think. Yeah, I think I mean, that's like age old wisdom, but I think you're it, it, it's always accurate but i think our iphones prompt us to to just send texts and just to it's there's so much inbound through our phones with all these yeah. notifications that people have actually forgot how to pick the phone up and call you know digital recruit i don't know virtual recruiting if someone wants a job with core group and they send a resume in and they don't call me at my desk line and and do a value proposition through a voicemail there's probably a chance you know you won't get the job with mm. us you need to pick the phone up and call me and tell me why you'd be a fit because one i know you've got you know the risk tolerance to pick up the phone and and and, and reach out but two it's just you know so th that's for any job i mean if you believe in your heart of hearts that you have a value proposition for a company you should pick up the phone call in write a personal letter to the person call in the letters still get to their house matt's personal cell phone number is 404 <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'll give yours out. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we did get another question to come in. Um, so, uh, yeah, is now the time to be taking a risk to move um, for employers elevating their current roles? Can you go again? Read yeah. That? So, in these four unsaken times, call it 2021 for the sake of good order is now the time to be taking a risk to move employers elevating okay so that's to move employers yeah, yeah to move employers that's a really good question i think um it's it's twofold uh, i get a lot of calls from people that are nervous because everyone's being laid off and yeah you know, they're like oh, i'm just gonna look because it's just become such a toxic environment but then I also, there's also a, if you hold the line long enough, a, what we call battlefield promotion on the other side. Once companies realize what they've done, they're like, oh my goodness, we, how far have we cut? And then there's a huge updraft. So there's that side of it. The other side is companies are retrenching right now. So maybe they did go through layoffs and remove three or four layers. And this is actually a really good time to enter companies because now they're retrenching and looking to grow. They're actually, it's actually a healthier entry point on, on the upswing. So is there risk in moving? There's always risk in moving any job, anytime, anywhere, period. Um, I don't think, you just have to weigh every scenario separate, depending on the company size, company performance, you know, the, the, you know what you'll be doing at that company survivability of the role i mean all those things you got to look at each thing so I, I don't think i can answer that question in a general form you have to look at each case case yeah. by case i i'd agree with that uh i mean especially now i would say look before you leap i mean that's always good advice but even now um considering the amount of unemployment that's still out there and underemployment that's out there. Um, and I'm maybe thinking specifically of Houston because we we did have a lot of large scale layoffs um, from the oil majors and uh, other uh, in, you know, energy industry um, here in the city. So there's, there's a lot of talent in the market uh, that might be waiting for the right opportunity. So, um, you know, if you're considering making a transition, I would say, uh, it, you know, I, I wouldn't leave where you are 
before you have a very good idea where you're going. Um, just for long-term health and sanity. This, this season has been stress-inducing enough, and so without job security, that can be even worse. Right. Uh, so, um, any, I think that was our last one. Any other questions before we, let me see if I can, I think that was the last one. Okay. Um, Appreciate all your questions. Um, yeah. So, hold on. Yeah. You got it? Okay. I think so. Great. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Um, so, yeah, it's uh, 1241. We, uh, we promised we'd keep it short, and we have. So uh, thank you, everyone who have joined us. Um, we will be hosting a webinar once a month for all of 2021, addressing different industry issues, uh, addressing opportunities, and really, um, really diving in to um, trying to open up our, our offices to uh, kind of all the information that we see and uh, kind of trade on that. And, you know, our, our hope is to share as much valuable information that we can with job seekers and um, our clients and uh, potential future clients who want to just know more about who we are and what value we can bring to the table. So. Thank you again from me. This is Bob here at Core Group. Thank you so much. We really appreciate it. Thank you guys for spending your time with us and we look forward to continuing to shed knowledge this year. Awesome. Well, you guys have a great 2021. Hopefully we'll see you again in no time. All right. Signing off.